In this video, I'm going to be sharing my process with you on how I create my annual Christmas card. This one is inspired by my vintage Christmas tree and ornaments. I like to paint cards and other illustrations for print double the size that they will be printed. So for a 4x6 card, I'm going to paint on a 9x12 surface. I chose aqua board for this because I'm going to be using a whole bunch of different supplies to get my desired effect. The drawing for this was very basic. Essentially, the only thing I really needed to make sure was circle was that ornament. So the next step is frisk it. I masked off all of the highlighted areas. Um, this might be a little bit overkill, but I think it was actually very helpful for me because I wanted to be very loose and messy with the background area. So I was able to freely plug in all my colors and everything without worries because I had all of this first kit in place to protect my highlighted areas. After selecting my color palette, um, I ended up going with something that was very high in saturation. It's essentially this high chroma palette minus the green gold, and I can mix that between the cobalt teal and the quin gold. Not quite that green gold, but I will be able to get it green. Um, anyway, I chose this very saturated palette because I wanted to be able to play up all of those colors reflecting off the synthetic pine needles, and I thought that it would be fun to really push the color and then be able to bring it back with the black oxide and opaque white. Another thing I'm going to be using in this project is salt. I was not kidding when I said I threw the entire kitchen sink at it, literally so many different supplies. So um, salt is really great for adding texture and I'll show you guys that a little bit later. So I'm starting with a large flat brush, and um, then I quickly switch over to a liner. I, um, <laughs> I've never painted anything like this before, and the reference photo is so challenging to look at because there's just so much going on. So my philosophy for this piece was just to make fun um, shapes and colors and kind of use the reference photo almost as an inspiration. You can see some of the salt on the board kind of sucking up the watercolor. It's important to let the salt fully dry with the watercolor underneath it, so that way when you remove it, it has done the fullest kind of effect that it can do on the painting. So after it was fully dry, I wiped all the salt off and also removed the frisket. The frisket barrier really allowed me to have fun and enjoy painting the background without having to worry about possibly painting into that ornament area. It's a very transparent bulb, so I wanted to use a lot of the white of the board without any of the branches or anything kind of cutting into the background. And painting with this high chroma palette is really fun because you can just mix the complementary colors to make your muddier colors. And then of course I have the option of adding the black or white as well. So at this stage I'm just trying to add as much color as possible without worrying about my value too much. The opaque white watercolor that I was using worked pretty good but it wasn't as bright as I wanted it to be so I opted for some acrylic gouache and I used that for my thickest white highlights. I knew for this piece I wasn't really going to use any um, colored pencils or anything like that. I wanted it to be very painterly. So normally I would use colored pencils in between, but I just switched right over to that acrylic gouache. And you'll see me kind of going back and forth between adding my darks in and then taking it back with using that white acrylic. I used the jet black acrylic gouache very sparingly. For the most part, I mixed the transpiral orange and dioxazine purple to make my darkest darks. While I was looking at my reference photo, I noticed the amount of brown and violet in it, so I really tried to exaggerate that and play that up quite a bit. I wanted to give this brush a shout out. This is my cat tongue three quarter inch brush by Neptune, which is by Princeton. 
and it's a th synthetic squirrel, so naturally it holds a lot of paint and water. But what makes this brush unique is the shape of the bristles. It's a lot wider near the ferrule, and then it comes to a really sharp point. So it allows you to move throughout the painting and do a precise line without having to dip into your palette a whole bunch. Besides that, I just used a very small liner brush to get more um, detailed lines throughout my painting. So now I was getting to the point in my illustration where I felt like I was getting a little bit lost and carried away, <laughs> plugging in different rainbow lines, basically. So that's always a good point to kind of reevaluate where you're at. And I like to use Photoshop for this. I will put my reference photo and a photo of my current state of my piece together. Sometimes it takes a little bit of editing to see them kind of on the same plane. It's really nice to be able to plan out what I want to change in my painting without actually having to change it first, because this way I can try out different things and see what I think is going to work best. So I do all of this on a separate layer and then put a different colored background behind it so that I'm able to use it as a reference as I continue to paint. My change is mainly just incorporated using a lot more gray tones and being more deliberate with creating pockets between all of the lines. I think it was just too busy, so there needed to be more places for the eye to rest. I went in with the acrylic gouache and, yeah, plugged all of those grayscale values in, and I think it really helped clarify it quite a bit. So now that I had clarity, I wanted to go back to doing fun stuff, which involves adding glitter and also metallics to it because this tree is so shiny and dazzling in real life, I wanted my card to look the same way. So I used this Lame Clear Diamond, I think it's called, because it's definitely not lame clear diamond. This stuff is awesome. It's essentially a clear binder with a glitter inside and it adds such a beautiful little sparkle to the painting. So after I successfully plugged that in and I was happy with how it looked, I wanted to switch over to also adding more metallics into it. And I chose three different colors, one an iridescent orange that will appear more orange over top of dark colors. The next was kind of a neutral gray, silver color. And the last one was this color that has a little bit of a real silver in it and it's essentially just a white metallic so i use that pearly color in a lot of different areas and i think it actually really helped brighten it up and just when you thought that there was no possible way i could ever add anything more to this extremely busy illustration i just i had to uh try something else I wanted to lift up certain areas to look almost like they were glowing or kind of little obstructed ornaments or something like that. And I knew that this was only going to lift up the watercolor and not the acrylic gouache. So it will leave some of the pine leaves in place. And um, yeah, this is a pretty simple technique. All I'm going to do is use a round stencil and a rag with a little bit of water on it and just lightly scrub the area to lift up that watercolor. I'm going to do this a couple different times to get some different circles throughout and I think that this was actually a really nice element to add because it kind of again gives the eyes another place to rest. All right. For the very last step, I'm going to just use a scratch board tool, but you could also use an X-Acto knife or something like that instead. And this is a great way to add some extra detailing into your work, especially if you want to add a little bit of very precise highlights. So I'm just going to use the scratch board tool to very lightly scratch into the top surface of the panel. And the aqua board has allowed me to really layer up and also take away the paint. I think that was so important for this piece to be able to add color and value and then take it back because of all of the reflections on this silver tinsel leaf. Honestly, I felt like a mad scientist with this project. Like, I just 
really wanted to try everything and just have so much fun with it because it's always great to experiment when you're not working on somebody else's project. I do a lot of commissions and stuff, so I normally try to play it a little bit safe, but since this is my holiday card and I just wanted to have fun, I was able to try a bunch of different stuff out. So even though it didn't turn out exactly how I thought it would, I think that it turned out really cool. So now that we're done with the painting process, let's head over to FedEx and get this stuff printed. I used to have a nice printer and be able to print my own stuff, but I don't anymore because it died, so now I just go to FedEx, and that's okay because it's very affordable. I got all of my cards and photos for the inside printed for just $12. I formatted everything to size in Photoshop before I left. And Sizzix has so kindly sent me this scoring board and trimmer, so I knew I was definitely going to use it for my holiday cards, and I'm excited to try it out for the first time. Beforehand, I would just um, use scissors to cut out all my cards and stuff, so this is going to be so nice to simplify the process a little bit. So after checking out <laughs> the tool and figuring out how it works, um, I was able to, yeah, just cut out my cards. It worked really nice and easily, and since I like to do cards and stuff, I'm, I'm pretty traditional like that. I just think it's so nice to receive them and also give them, so um, I know I'm going to be using this a lot in the future. I always make my husband take a photo with me for Christmas so that we can send it out with our card, and it's so cool to see over the years just like how we change and, you know, our, our cat family change too. So this year our cats didn't cooperate, but what you gonna do? So I just scored the fold line of all of the cards, and then once I had finished folding everything, I just use a little bit of washi tape to secure the photos to the inside of the cards. Just kind of like a cute little touch. After I finished assembling the cards, I just felt like they were still missing something. So I did decide to go back through with that Fine Tech Four Elements set and add a little bit of metallic shine on top. I think that it just kind of makes everything pop a little bit more and it makes them all unique. I think that we can all agree that this year's theme for Christmas cards is over the top, and we're just gonna have to see if we can now do ourselves next year. I hope that you guys really enjoy the process of creating this kind of wacky card, and I hope that you also have a wonderful holiday season celebrating in whatever way you normally do, and hopefully it's with friends and family and good food too. So I will see you guys next time, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful week.